The chair recognizes a senator from Pottawatomi, Senator Gronstall. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, I would now ask to take up Senate Resolution Number 116, I believe. You are correct. The chair calls up Senate Resolution 116. Senator Gronstall, you are in order. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, I will make my opening remarks brief. Uh, this is a resolution to honor the service of a man that has been with us many, many years here in the Senate and has contributed mightily to uh, public policy in the state of Iowa. And I'm going to give everybody else a chance to speak. Uh, and um, as, as we wind down this session, this is always kind of a, kind of a, um, I don't know what to call it, a little bit melancholy to reflect on people that, um, that uh, to have many great memories about their service here and to be saddened that we are going to lose those folks. And he is um, not going to be that far away, uh, but it is a change for him. It's a change for our caucus, and it's a change for the Iowa Senate. So this is always uh, a little bit bittersweet as we go through these uh, resolutions at the end of the session. So um, I'm going to stop there and allow others to speak and share some memories um, and uh, see how this goes. But uh, this, that is the resolution to honor Senator Dick Dearden for his many years of service uh, to the Iowa legislature. Senators, is there further discussion on Senate Resolution 116? The chair recognizes a senator from Marshall, Senator Sodders. Thank you, Madam President. Well, Dick, my son, thanks you for all the hunting magazines uh, that you no longer wanted and that he has used, and uh, for your support of those type of activities for kids throughout all your years. I know uh, the brief uh, chats that you had with Adam, he really appreciated it and you've moved him uh, further in his uh, hunting career, so thank you. The chair recognizes a senator from Johnson, Senator Bolcom. Um, thank you, Madam President. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, I rise in support of Senate Resolution 116. It occurs to me, Senator Dearden, I've had my back to you for a very long time <laughs> as I get up and speak, so I'll try and speak more directly to you this afternoon. Uh, first off, thank you for your service to the state. I, we've served uh, together on the Natural Resource Committee for a very long time, and I know other members of the committee will share uh, this this memory as well, the, the, the meetings and meetings that we had talking about deer and turkeys and, <laughs> and deer <laughs> and more deer. Uh, it wasn't really that. I thought for a while I'm on the Ag Committee, but then it didn't really work. It was natural resources, and we did get into some environmental protection from time to time. But you've done such a great job of, of standing up for our natural resource issues, especially for people that love to be outside uh, hunting little things that look like this. Um, <laughs> little fuzzy bear. Um, so he, he kind of thanks you. He's happy that you're going because you've been so effective. Um, and also on the, on the issue of standing up for working men and women in Iowa and making sure that our state budget and our priorities uh, address the needs of working people. You, you were consistent vote on minimum wage, wage theft, a variety of worker, worker safety issues. Your whole career here has been about that. And uh, this body's been better for having your service on those issues. So sometimes those issues get away from us, but you are always there to remind us about those. And then the, finally, on the issues of, of making sure our investments don't go to all the big guys, uh, you were a consistent vote on uh, standing up against corporate welfare and, and spending money that we didn't have on on the big people, on the big, on the big powerful interests, and I've always appreciated that. Uh, best wishes to you and Sharon in your uh, next phase of life. Thank you. The chair recognizes the other senator from Johnson, Senator Dvorsky. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, I too rise in support of uh, Senate Resolution 116. 
Well, sorry, Senator Dearden. Uh, you always noted I was only a few months more senior than you here in the Iowa Senate, and unfortunately, you're leaving. You're never going to catch up to me. So, uh, any, anyway, we, I, I came in at, at the end of uh, '94, and then you came in in '95 after the '94 election. So, and we've been here ever since, and uh, hopefully, doing good work. You, uh, you are the uh, embodiment of the citizen legislature. Legislator, you work really hard on. on uh, Legislation for natural resources, I will. That's a tremendous achievement you've done. At some point, we'll figure out that we need to pass that. And the citizens of Iowa, I think, will at some point. And you certainly take a lot of credit for that. Other natural resources things, and of course, uh, uh, working people's issues. Always the voice in our caucus to say this isn't right for working people, and we need to do something different. So I appreciate that. I noted that you got inducted in the uh, local uh, Labor Hall of Fame. Certainly deserve that for all your work on labor issues also over all these many years. So uh, we'll be down. We'll cut the number of former job developers in the Iowa Senate down to uh, one instead of two when you leave. And uh, certainly wish you a wonderful retirement. Thank you for all your great service. The chair recognizes a senator from Mahaska, Senator Rosenboom. Thank you, Madam President. I, uh, of two support this resolution 116 in honoring Senator Dearden. Uh, I don't go back near as far as some of you do with Senator Dearden, but I have in the four years I've been here, been to a lot of committee meetings with him, and I appreciate him personally. I appreciate his passion for uh, the outdoors, for wildlife, for hunting wild waterfowl and all those things. I also uh, remember that he has often reminded me and probably others that we are sitting in his Senate district as we speak, right? Um, the members of our committee remember maybe the first meeting we had this session, and Dearden tried to blame me for wanting a hummingbird hunting bill. You remember that? Now, just to make sure that we set the story straight before he leaves, actually, he wants that bill. And, and I'll try to carry on your work, but he wants that bill because, like me, he's not a young man anymore. And his uh, love for hunting, uh, I really think he wants the hummingbird hunting bill because he would like to have one of his prey become stationary in flights, who has a chance to hit them. So uh, with that, Senator Dearden, uh, thank you for many years of service uh, to the state and to other, pa other uh, areas that you've had an interest in and worked on. Uh, Going to miss you there in the committee, and I just wish you and your wife and the rest of your family the very best in your retirement. Thank you. The chair recognizes a senator from Polk, Senator Peterson. Thank you, Madam President. I stand uh, in support of Senate Resolution 116 as well. Uh, senator Dearden, my very first vote in the legislature was a dove hunting bill, which my district did not like dove hunting, but you managed to get your way. So congratulations to you on that. Um, and I know I probably shouldn't say this about people getting angry, but I always like to watch you get angry because <laughs> I know if you were getting angry, you were standing up for people working the night shift and young families and the people of your district who you have never forgotten. You've done a tremendous job with your service to the state of Iowa, and um, I hope maybe you'll take me fishing now that you're retiring. The chair recognizes a senator from Polk, Senator Zahn. Thank you, Madam President. Well, I stay on a little different uh, with my colleagues. I reluctantly support Senate Re Resolution 116 because, and I'm having fun with you, by the way, um, my freshman year, I went on a vacation with my kids and I drove uh, through southern Iowa. And if you know where Interstate 35 separates down by the border, it's a real wooded area. And I hit a deer. And I said, boy, when I get in that Senate, I'm going to offer a bill that says we're going to expand uh, out-of-state licenses for deer just to thin out that hurt. And I came over to you, 
And I said to you, now this just makes good common sense. You know, there's so many accidents in regards to that. And you warned me about that. Well, I filed the bill anyway. And I got more emails from so many people from the state of Iowa just chewing me out for offering such a crazy idea. But I will have to commend you. You are my friend, and you're someone that I really have been honored to serve with. I go back to all the memories. I met my wife at the Iowa State Fair in your district. And you were so proud and fought for the State Fair and I always looked forward to seeing you when we come down there as legislators because you got a grin from ear to ear and you always tell me I've been here every day. I also remember a memory for some of the people that are new to this chamber when we used to do the really late nights. And I remember at the very end, it was probably 3 o'clock in the morning, and we were off about $20,000, if I recall. And you sat in that back desk there, and I was right with you, and you balanced the budget longhand on a piece of paper. No calculators. And uh, that's a memory that I'll never forget. I've also been told that you don't do a lot of forms. I don't know how you get away with that, but it's something that I think everybody in here would probably like to be able to have a little less of. The Dove Bill. I was someone that voted against the Dove Bill. And let me tell you, I got literally, like everybody else who was down here, thousands of emails. And to this day, I still hear from constituents who remind me that I voted against the Dove Bill. Now, I really wasn't passionate in regards to this one way or the other, but I have someone in my life that said that is the sign of love and peace, and we shouldn't be hunting that down. I also remember I said, I'd consider voting for the Dove Bill, and I said, but I want to meet Ted Nugent. And uh, you made that happen, and I did get to meet Ted Nugent. He'd be mad at me now. But I will have to tell you, the passions that you've shown, and you and I have had some exchanges in regards to the hardworking Iowans. These are people that are member of labor unions, and they are good people. And uh, I salute you for your award that you got through the labor unions. You deserve that. I hope that your daughter, Pam, is elected in this body. I hope she fills her shoes. And uh, certainly appreciate it all the time to get to know her through the years. And of course, you're married to one heck of an incredible woman, Sharon. And I wish you all the best of luck. And I know there's going to be a lot of outdoors activities involved in that. And I hope to see you and keep in touch with you. And I do support Senate Resolution 116. And I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. The chair recognizes a senator from Cerro Gordo, Senator Reagan. Well, this is going to be a little awkward, isn't it? So uh, I can remember coming into the chamber when I first got elected, and Senator Dearden handed me this really thick binder, and it was the Health and Human Services budget. And he was so excited that he was off that committee, and I was... <laughs> I had no idea, so it's good to know that he could figure the budget in, in longhand. Um, he has just been a great friend and wonderful meetings in the well, right, with the Rules Committee. But um, I think when Senator Dearden speaks for something, we know that it is an important issue, and he stands up with the passion and commitment for working families that we don't often see. And we are going to miss that in the chamber. I actually knew his daughter before I knew him. So it doesn't surprise me that the two are connected. So I wish you well, and I will miss you. The chair recognizes a senator from Osceola, Senator Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. I stand in support, uh, like Senator Zahn, reluctantly because we really need to have Senator Dearden around a little bit more, and I'll explain why. So I um, kind of reluctantly stand in support of Senate Re Re Resolution 116. Let's talk about the real estate fair. It's located in Spencer, Iowa. It's called the Clay County Fair. It's the world's greatest county fair. And uh, across that sprawling fairgrounds, uh, uh, Senator Dearden paid a visit. He's not afraid to travel the state and, and, and find out uh, local customs and traditions. Uh, I understand that he went up and down that fairgrounds on a hot uh, September day, 
came back to uh, some friends who were there and said, well, where's the beer tent? Well, he didn't know that it's been the tradition and the, actually the policy of the, of the uh, fair board that there'll be no beer served on the fairgrounds. Uh, and uh, he said, I'm never coming back here again. Now he's been back to Spencer. I remember uh, uh, Senator Kibbe, I think, invited him up to uh, an exit issue. I was glad to have him there in the audience. And uh, we're gonna miss you, Dick uh, and Sharon. It's been a pleasure to serve on the Natural Resources and Environment Committee. And if this body has any sense at all, we'll pay you a tribute today by passing an amendment that will have long-term uh, benefits for this state when we decide that our environment is one of the top issues that we have to address and water quality is coming. It's coming, so uh, it'll happen. And, and I think we should do, pass that today and honor you if we get to that bill. So anyway, thank you, Dick. Wish you best and, and uh, uh, you know, be safe out there when you're hunting and fishing. The chair recognizes that Senator from Polk, Senator Bizignano. Thank you, Madam Chair, Madam President. Uh, I, I support the resolution. Uh, I have a very unique history with, with Dick. Uh, I served with him in his first two years when he was here, when he was a freshman. And uh, I'm the one who started by, as, a, as a joke, the freshman dinner. And I told Dick that he had to take a, that class, he had to take all the senators out for dinner. And they did. And I didn't realize when I got back here, 18 years later, you were still doing it, and it cost me. So uh, <laughs> it was quite a tradition that, that you, you kept going. But uh, it's, it's ironic to be with your first two years and then to be with your last two years. And to watch you when you come in and you know everybody's quiet and trying to feel the place. When coming back, uh, with a little bit of experience that I had, and loss of a lot of memory. I saw how you had grown and I saw the respect that you had and the color that you had in the caucus is incredible. Uh, it's too bad we can't talk like that on the floor because you've got some of the best speeches that I've ever heard back in the caucus room. But uh, thinking of Dick Dearden, I don't necessarily think of him as a senator because I've known Dick since the 70s. And that was the days when Dick was grinding out door to door as a Democrat, uh, asking for nothing in return, uh, just trying to help get Democrats elected. And, and, and the Dearden's were a package. I mean, you didn't just see Dick, you know, you saw Dick and you saw Sharon and you saw Pam. And they were probably at every Democratic event I ever went to and that probably there ever was. Uh, and the cliche that when you look up a Democrat, in the dictionary, if you don't see Dick Dearden's face, you got the wrong dictionary because he is truly a Democrat uh, first. Uh, he's a humanitarian. He's never betrayed his roots or his beliefs or his district. Uh, he's been a man of his word and a man that has lived the life uh, that we all wish we could live. And we're going to miss you. I'm going to miss you. Uh, you're the senior guy. Uh, and I'm going to start, I guess, moving up the totem pole again. But it won't be the same without you, Dick, and we're going to miss you. And uh, God bless you and Sharon. I love Sharon and Pam. Uh, God bless you in your next life. The chair recognizes a senator from Howard, Senator Wilhelm. Thank you, Madam President, members of the Senate. I also rise in support of SR 116. It, it makes me feel warm to see a Senator Dearden over there with his family. In my eight years of being here, there's many times that Sharon's been up here sharing lunch with him, or part of his daughter or some of his family has always been here to spend some time during the day, sitting in the corner talking as a family. Senator Dearden, that reflects well as you as a Senator because you take that love for family. You take that love, it shows every day and everything you do. Your, your compassion, your consideration 
for Iowa with natural resources, it shows that through your love for your family. There's many times I walk past your desk, you show me your pictures of your grandkids and kids and how proud you are of them. And because of that, you always want to make Iowa a place for the future generations. And one thing I want to say too is, Madam President, is that I have a, every time I walk by uh, Senator Dearden in the morning, he goes, hello, darling, how was your day? I will miss that. Thank you, Madam President. You're welcome, Senator. The chair recognizes a senator from Warren, Senator Garrett. Thank you, Madam President. Well, Dick, I haven't known you as long as some of the other folks here either. And uh, I first became aware of Dick Dearden when I was over in the House and we were doing the Dove Bill, like a couple other folks have mentioned. And uh, uh, I found out right away then who Dick Dearden was and that he was a leader over here on sportsman's issues and those kinds of things. And, and uh, also, I know you have occasion to visit Warren County every once in a while and take part in some events down there and visiting with some of the sportsmen, and uh, we appreciate that. And I just want to wish you all the best in the future. Uh, you've served us for a long time here, and you deserve a little time off, and uh, we'll miss you, but uh, all the best to you. Thank you. The chair recognizes a senator from Polk, Senator McCoy. Thank you, Madam President. Ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, uh, I stand in support of Senate Resolution 116. And having been a guy that cut my teeth in democratic politics, there was no way I could do that without encountering Dick and Sharon Dearden. And at the time, Sharon ran the party, and she ran the party very well. Uh, she, uh, she was an amazing executive director and organizer, and Dick did whatever she asked. And that generally meant uh, being at everything democratic. And uh, we've walked in many parades together and organized uh, many events together. And uh, I found out just what, what a friend Dick Dearden could be when I faced my first primary. Uh, and I was primaried by uh, labor and uh, by a person, I sh should not say by labor, but by a person that came out of labor and, uh, and somebody that uh, normally Dick would be supportive of. And he stood by me. And uh, when we were redistricted together uh, and put into the same district, because we always shared neighboring districts, I moved. Um, we've had a really unique friendship and he's been very good to me in every way. And when I went through, when I went through some difficult parts of my life, he and Sharon stood by my side, were very supportive of me. And uh, I think uh, there probably isn't a, a stronger person uh, that has stood up for equality than Dick Dearden. And, uh, and I can tell you, He's, he's going to be missed in the Iowa Senate because he's a leader and he's a person that doesn't need to check a poll or a compass to figure out where he's going to be on an issue. He's always been on the right side of the issues. And uh, he, will, he will be missed in every way. Um, I, I'm told that uh, in his uh, retirement that he's going to take up bicycle riding and that... Uh, <laughs> He's going to get a pair of spandex shorts, and uh, and he's going to ride alongside the highway, and uh, and he wants to take the center lane, and uh, and uh, and uh, I know he'll have a I know he'll have a lot a lot of uh, a lot of exciting things to do in his retirement. He's always been an outdoorsman, and his philosophy has always been: if it flies, it dies. And, uh, and I know that uh, he's got a lot of things to shoot, kill, and, and uh, hook. Um, so uh, I wish him very well. Um, he has an amazing family. He's very proud of his family. He's proud of every one of his kids. Um, he has a, a terrific daughter that's running for the legislature and I think would be a very fine senator, and I'm looking forward to serving with her. 
And I wish Dick and Sharon much happiness in the years to come. And uh, best of luck. We'll miss you very much. The chair recognizes a senator from Des Moines, Senator Courtney. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam President. I rise in support of uh, Senate Resolution 116. Uh, the problem is, we'll stand here today, Dick, I can't tell the best stories about you here. <laughs> There's some pretty good stories. I met Dick uh, before I was in the Senate. I met him. I was up here uh, lobbying for the auto workers, and uh, uh, Dave Neal was the Dave Neal was the state president of the uh, auto workers cap, and he introduced me to Senator Deard. Now I didn't. We we actually met at a bar. I didn't believe that he was really a senator. He had on blue jeans and a flannel shirt, and I said to Dave Neal, "Okay, good trick. This guy's out of a factory. Where's the real senator?" And it took me a while to realize that that's the way Dick dresses when he goes out. He doesn't put on a hairs. He just goes out and and. Uh, and uh, is with the labor people. So that, I, I appreciate that about you, Dick. And I, I wanted to say another thing about, um, about those doves. Uh, when, when Nancy first came here with me to the Senate, she didn't work here beside me. We weren't married yet then, and she got a job on the switchboard. And she was only there about a week, and she, we went home one night, and she said, what is up with this guy Dearden and the dove bill? And I said, what do you mean? And she said, I had about 1,000 calls today. I said, are they for it or against it? And she said, doesn't matter. I just keep getting calls for and against the Dove Bill. So I was glad to see that Dove Bill go, Dick. You worked on it. Your heart was in it. Um, the, only pe the only entity that didn't like it actually were the Doves. And uh, I think everybody else learned to live with it. Uh, it's going to – I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you because you and I sit together in, a, in caucus every day. And uh, when someone says something – a little funny, Dick's always poking me or I'm poking him, and I'm going to miss that. Also, you may, this makes me one of the, I'm getting to be one of the more senior guys around here, and I don't like that part at all. <laughs> but I'm going to miss you, Dick. I'm glad you're here. Come back and see us. Uh, I, too, look forward to serving with your daughter in the, in the uh, legislature, and uh, the best to you. The chair recognizes a senator from Story, Senator Kornbach. Well, thank you, Madam President. I, as with everyone else, rise in support of this resolution. Dick, I wanted to thank you for... Let me turn this microphone around so I can actually look at you. There we go. I want to thank you for all of your years of service uh, to the people of Iowa. You've been a model public servant, and I want to thank you as well for your personal friendship uh, ever since I came to the body. Uh, you've been a great friend, supportive, and we've always gotten along uh, so very well. And um, even, even um, when um, uh, we've disagreed, uh, your friendship has shown through. Um, and that's not just true for me, it's true for every member of our caucus, and I think every member of this body. Of course, of course you, you, you never really get cross with anybody. That um, hardly ever occurs. Um, but uh, you have great friends here. You have great friends in Des Moines. You also have some great friends up in Ames, uh, both at my house and in my neighborhood. And you know who I'm talking about. I remember going with them to um, one of your wedding anniversaries a few years ago. We won't mention how many decades of marital bliss you had been celebrating. Uh, but uh, I got to say, uh, that woman you married, she must have been a child bride. I mean, shame on you, you old dog. You were robbing the cradle. I really wish the both of you all of the best. I uh, presume that we will see you around here frequently. And uh, again, thank you for everything you've done for us, uh, for this body, for the people of Iowa. The chair recognizes a senator from Benton, Senator Kapuzian. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I, too, rise in support of uh, Senate Resolution 116. Uh, Dick and Sharon, you were probably some of the first people to, I've been here eight years, and some of the first people on the other side of the aisle to welcome Brenda and I um, at the beginning and the receptions, and we've always let our differences lie at the door, and always been a good friend and supporter, and we appreciate knowing both of you very well as we do, and, and uh, I especially appreciate your passion for your family, for the outdoors, for the State Fair, uh, passion that you show in everything that you do. And we only wish you the best in your retirement and hope you come back to see us from time to time. I still think we wouldn't have to appropriate so much to the State Fair if you wouldn't have snuck under the fence so much when you were a young kid. 
Anyway, that's bygones be bygones, and uh, we wish you the best. And it's been a pleasure to know you and Sharon, and hope to see more, more of you in the future. Thank you. The chair recognizes a senator from Blackhawk, Senator Dotsler. Thank you, Madam President. I also rise in support of uh, Senate Resolution 116. Um, Senator Dearden, uh, when I first got elected over in the House, I was always hearing about the senator over here and the Labor Committee. And uh, when I moved across, to, uh, I was on the Natural Resources Committee in the, in the House. Uh, and having a biology degree, I was really looking forward to working with you. And I don't know if you were looking forward to working with me, but, uh, but uh, I definitely had some opinions about, about uh, biology in our state. And it turned out that our economic development stuff meant at the same time. So you were saved from me, you know. So uh, everybody's got to talk about dove honey. So I got to talk about it also. Um, I was pretty much, in fact, I was opposed to it. Uh, people in my district didn't want it. My neighbor used to come over every day and yell at me about morning doves and how I could be so stupid to shoot those birds. But yet I had one of my best friends that went to Missouri every year and shot the birds that left Iowa and flew down to Missouri and they shot them there. And being a biologist, I understand the population dynamics of dove hunting. And uh, the truth of the matter is, it didn't hurt our population at all. We had another resource that uh, people actually paid licenses for. And really, sportsmen and women are the ones that provide all the habitat in our state, or at least contribute a lot to it through their licenses. So the other birds benefit from it. Just last week, um, I looked out my window at my bird feeder, and there were a few birds there that hadn't got shot yet. It was full of doves, morning doves, and I thought of you. So, uh, you know, you passed something that, that uh, we didn't think would ever get passed. And uh, actually, there's a benefit to the state of Iowa. And my neighbor completely forgot about the bill because she still sees morning doves because we found out that city morning doves tend to migrate through cities and they don't get shot. It's the rural morning doves that used to them habitat. They migrate through the rural areas, and those are the ones that get the hell blown out of them. So, uh, so it worked out all right for my neighbor and me. I remember as uh, it, we hadn't been there very here very long, and there was a bunch of us House members that came over. And I remember one senator who did about an hour and a half on opening remarks on an amendment. And uh, finally, we called a caucus, and we went in there, and I remember you and another senator saying, bleepity bleep, this isn't the bleeping house, you know, this is the Iowa Senate. And uh, I'll never forget those call for bleeps. But, uh, you know, he said there's a difference over here in the, in the Senate from the House. You know, we try to do things in, in more of a senatorial way. You know, it's in an honorable way. You're supposed to have re respect for your chamber. And we actually work together. And I thought that was great words of advice till I saw I heard you get worked up. And then it was like, well, a lot of screaming and yelling going on. And uh, in fact, you, that was 14 years ago and you were just doing it last week again. <laughs> You haven't, you didn't lose a stride. And now that I found out that you really do want to ride a bicycle, I'm sure that Senator Bokum and I can uh, accommodate you on some training lessons. We'll just make sure you're on the very, uh, you know, center lane side of things. And, uh, uh, but uh, what I loved about you, and I still do, is you have always been consistent. When, and when it comes to talking about working men and women, you stand up and fight for the people of your district and the people across this state. And you've always been there for them. And we know when you look at people who don't get as paid as much as they should, and you've got people in this state that take advantage of people that might not be as educated as they could be and get their wages uh, taken in ways that shouldn't. You've always been a voice, and you always stood up for it to the very last day you've been in the Iowa Senate. And uh, that's one of the things that you can take away 
and take home with you and be always proud about is that you've been there for the people in your district and the people in this state. So thank you. Do any other senators seek the floor? Senator Gronstall, oh, excuse me. The chair recognizes a senator from Henry, Senator Taylor. Thank you, Madam President. I also stand in support of Senate Resolution 116. Uh, Dick, I would like to thank you from me personally as a union AFSCME brother and from all of AFSCME members uh, statewide. We thank you for your service. Do any other senators seek the floor? Seeing none, the chair recognizes a senator from Pottawatomie, Senator Gronstall, for closing remarks on Senate Resolution 116. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, you know, um, all this talk about hunting and doves, um, I don't, Senator Dearden, my memory of your talk about hunting or fishing or all those kinds of activities, it wasn't about the fish or the birds. It was about family and friends and community. That's what I remember about your passion for hunting. It wasn't, I get to go out and shoot something. By the way, I do remember, I was up in that office the first time we passed the Duff Bill, the one that got vetoed by somebody who shall remain nameless. Um, but his, his initials are uh, Tom Vilsack. But, um, <laughs> Uh, I was up in that office, and, and I told Stu Iverson, um, everybody's getting flooded with these phone calls, and I think it's only going to get worse. And somehow, we passed school aid that year on time, something we haven't been able to do. And we were in the minority, but we passed it on time. Mike Conley talked on the bill, and the debate was like, 15 minutes, and I went over to Stu and I said, it isn't going to get any easier. Let's take it up now. So we took up dove hunting that, and we got done with that, and we passed, and we shipped it over to the house, and, and then I go up to my office. This was before they threw me out of the office on the third floor and stuck me in the basement office, so it was way back then. I went up to the office, and I got my phone and I started checking on messages and you know here's one for dove hunting here's one against here's one for and here's one coo 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 so I think the doves were actually calling that day um, um, so it has been an honor to serve with you but I really want to say that I want to say it again your hunting and fishing stories were not about the, the hunt they were not about the fish they were about family and friends and community. And your passion for dove hunting was an opportunity to help take young people out and get them interested in the outdoors. Um, and that's what I remember about your passion about dove hunting. It wasn't about the doves. It was about family and friends and community. Um, and also, your passion, the two of your passion, um, Sharon and Dick, you were, you were the Polk County leaders. Uh, back in those days, you were producing 30, 40,000 vote margins out of Polk County um, back in those days. Um, much to the chagrin of the folks on the other side of the aisle back then, um, producing good majorities out of Polk County. And that's, uh, you strengthened the Democratic Party. And it was always about ordinary working people growing a middle class um, and helping people have a voice in their workplace. So I want to thank you for your years of service. I think everybody in this chamber has been magnified by your presence being here. So with that, Madam President, I move adoption of SR 116. The Senator from Pottawatomie has moved the adoption of Senate Resolution 116. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, say no. The motion prevails. Senate Resolution 116 is adopted.
The chair recognizes a senator from Polk, Senator Dearden. Well, thank you, Madam Chairman. Anyway, I'm a little bit emotional. Uh, I haven't had this many people say nice things about me for a long time. But first, I'd like to introduce my family. It's here today. My daughter, Pam, my son, David, my other son, Mark, and his wife, Minda, my grandson, the Honorable, the Honorable uh, Ryan Horn. He's now the uh, a, uh, a councilman in South Dakota. So, you know, this last 22 years, and you know, like you said, Tony, Tony said that he was here when I started, and here when I finished, and there's a big gap in between. One story about Tony B. <laughs> you know, Tony, first time he ran for the House, you know, like, like it's been said, I'm, I'm a door-knocking fool. And so I go down on the south side, and, and Tony and I are, if you understand the Italian community down there, it, they're all cousins. <laughs> they're all cousins. And, and, and Tony... Uh, the Bizignano was married to Shabaro somewhere along the line, and Sharon's cousin married to Shabaro, so that makes Tony and I cousins. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go down there and knock doors for Tony. And they, they, they get me in this, you know, passing out the, the, the maps and everything. And the south side is tough to walk. There's a lot of, especially you get down the old Precinct 77 where you go up and head down hills and and so I go out there all day long. I'm knocking doors. I get back to the headquarters, Tony's house. Tony had knocked one door. <laughs> that was his mother's so he could get a picture for his brochure. <laughs> and that's, that's honest to God truth. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I was a little bit, you know, Todd Bowman down there, you know, Senator Bowman. <laughs> you know, I was so glad when he was elected because... <laughs> You know, at least I wasn't the shortest one here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, once we lost Jack Kibbe, I was kind of worried. Uh, and Senator Braze, I hope to next year that you're chair of Natural Resources. You did a wonderful job this year working with me and, and working with our caucus and and working with the, the other side of the aisle. Uh, and Senator Courtney, you and Nancy are some of the closest friends I could ever have. Uh, we've spent a little time down at uh, the doghouse together, which is a local watering hole, if you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, You've just been friends, and I'm one of the greatest things that's happened up here that you two met each other and uh, and fell in love, and and uh, it, you've just been wonderful friends. And Senator Dotzler, <laughs> you know, yeah, you don't have too many regrets when you're up here, but you know. First time I met him, they said he was running for, for, for the House. So I said, well, here, here's, here's a contribution to your campaign. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> yeah, but I did. I gave him his first first dollar. But uh, and then there, Senator Dvorsky from Iowa City. <laughs> and that's an inside that's an inside joke. He, he hates to be called from Iowa City. He'll immediately correct you that, that he's that he's not from Iowa City, so but I've had fun. I have had fun with that. At first I don't think he knew I was messing with him. <laughs> and, and he would he would correct me every damn time. <laughs> every time he'd always correct me. That's like as long as you keep doing that, I'm going to keep doing it too. So, and uh, Senator Hart and Kenny, you know, 
you two, you, you will put up with my bad mouth and farmers in, in caucus with never saying a word. <laughs> and that just amazes me, because I would a couple times come unglued <laughs> if I were you. And uh, Senator James St. John, your passion for education is second to none. And uh, just a wonderful person. And I, I hope all you folks are back next year so you can carry on. And uh, Senator Singh, my friend Senator Singh, we've, we've hung out together a lot. And he, there's a little story about Joe. Joe used to be, he was out to uh, Adventureland. He had a trailer out there, or an RV. And they would bring cats down. And he would spay cats and, and be on the phone at the same time. And, and he also, he would. Uh, one time, my dog's teeth needed cleaned, you know? So here Joe comes over to the house. He gives the dog a shot. The dog gets sleepy. We, we, lay the, we put a blanket on the kitchen table, lay the dog up there, and he cleans the teeth, you know? <laughs> and then, uh, well, there's Senator Taylor there. He's uh, asked me, brother, we've, uh, the labor union, we call each other brothers and sisters, and and uh, Senator Cordine and uh, Senator Taylor, and Senator Dodgler, we're brothers and sisters, or brothers, I guess. <laughs> but uh, you know, he's been a great guy and, and just wonderful to work with. Senator Soders, you always get me to buy raffle tickets for your guns that I never win. <laughs> I don't think you actually turn my name in. And then there's Senator Hogue, and, and I just hope that next year he's not here. I don't want to see you here next year. I want to hear about you in Washington. And I can say I knew him when. <laughs> Senator Horn, you know, this guy, when I came up here, you know, I'm a freshman, and, and like, man, Senator Horn was the majority leader, and uh, he, he made me chair of the Labor Committee. I can't imagine doing that to anybody. <laughs> I would have never done that to you. I was so happy, and all of a sudden I figured out this is probably the worst committee up here. So, <laughs> but, but you better be. You and Phyllis have been wonderful to work with over the years, and, and I really appreciate it. And, and you got a couple, at least a couple more years to go, so they can say nice things about you for change. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. Thank you. And, and Senator Yoakum, I first remember you when you went to Democratic National Convention with my daughter, Pam. And uh, you were for, for uh, Kennedy, and she was for Carter, but uh, you both got along well, and, and, uh, and that was in New York, and Pam was only 18 years old at the time. So, uh, Senator Mathis, I hope you get your ballpark. <laughs> you know, I got my fingers crossed. You know, I was a little iffy, <laughs> but uh, I really do hope you get it. And my friend, Senator McCoy, you know, this place has changed so much in 22 years. When Senator McCoy got up and made the joke here a while back that never ask a woman or a gay man their age, it was accepted. And thank God we're starting to accept people for what they are. And he's just a wonderful person. He's a wonderful father to his kid. Um, brilliant. God, I wish I had his brains and his education. But 
he's just a great guy and gonna miss him. Senator Kornbach, I have to listen to you for hours sometime, <laughs> you know? But if I want to know about the, the economy, you're the guy I listen to. I, I loved your, uh, your editorial. I'm sure it really TOPO'd a couple folks, but the, your editorial in <laughs> last Sunday's paper, but it was excellent. And then there's Senator Reagan. <sighs> yeah, so she was, she, when I handed you that file, I tell you, there was a load off my back. You know, that's a, that was the world's worst committee. <laughs> I, I, I served on it for a couple years, and we were going up to Marshalltown one time and with a, a, a Republican senator, and we were sharing a ride, and I don't recall his name now, but he'd been around a long time, and I said, just how did you get on this committee? And he said, well, he said, you either have to be a freshman or voted wrong for leadership. <laughs> and, <laughs> And I was thankful to get that off. And then there's Senator Wilhelm over there, better known as Mad Dog. <laughs> I mean, this is probably the only person in the history of the United or of the, the, the state of the state Senate that's defeated two incumbent senators. I mean, that's amazing. The first four years you were here, you you never said much. And after you won re-election, you walked for them. You walked like I belong. You talked like I belong. And my guys, you belong. And then you got Senator Gronsall. He's been my leader for 20 years. 20 years. And I've only really been really pewed at him, I think, once. And that's not bad, because I've been mad at Sharon a couple times. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> but then I can go on the other side of the aisle. Ch Senator Chalgren, you're, you, you just amaze me to listen to you. I, I enjoy, I enjoy, you know most of your, your amendments aren't going anywhere, but you love putting them out there. <laughs> and it's just great. And Senator Dix, you know, I, I, since that day I asked you to define a labor boss, I've never heard that phrase come out of your mouth again. And <laughs> Senator Johnson, you and I have worked together in so many areas. And I remember at one time there was no drunk boating law in Iowa. And it took us several years to get a law that, that it was illegal to drive a, a boat drunk. You can go 50 miles an hour with a vehicle that doesn't have brakes, and nobody wanted to have, make, it, make it against the law. And we worked on that, and later on, we, we, we worked to get it to drop to 08. We, 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 together, we worked on a bill to kids under 12 had to have life best on when, when boats were underway. And you worked your side of the aisle, I worked mine. We got that accomplished. Took us several years. I mean, you just, it's common sense stuff. Even Senator Zahn would have said it was common sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Senator Rosenboom, you're, you're, you're invited. You can uh, share a duck blind with me. Uh, you've been a, a wonderful person uh, to work with. We, I really enjoyed working with you. We, I think we've both been tried to, be, tried to have been fair with each other and have been fair. And uh, you're just a lot of fun. Senator Don Zahn, I don't know. <laughs> you know, what a guy. You know, I tried to bring him along. I've only, I really, a couple times, I love to mess with him if I can. And uh, every couple times I had to get up on the floor and mess with him like I was really angry. I wasn't. <laughs> Senator Capuchin, your wife thought one time that you went overboard when we were, when we, were we just had a friendly argument. And she thought, oh, you shouldn't have said that. And you apologized to me and like, what the heck for? I mean, you know, I mean, we were friends, you know. 
Uh, Senator Schultz, you know, you and I, we've had a lot of conversations in there about the history of things that has went on here that and you weren't aware of. And, and it was, it was, you know, philosophically, we're 100 miles apart, but we're, we got 60,000 Iowans that we support. And, and they are, they're all different in every district. Senator Shipley, you've got rich all yourself next year. We've, he's got a constituent that talks about this lake, this 12-mile uh, lake down, in, down by Afton. And he's been after me and everything. And now he's all yours. And, <laughs> and, I, and I love it. Um, I always say, you know, Senator Shipley's a cattleman, and he's always a person who knew him, and he was a lobbyist for the cattlemen. I, I, I tell you, we got cattle in my district. I got two cows in front of A.E. Dairy. <laughs> you know, I mean, it. Uh, I'd like to. Thank the, the st our staff on both sides of the aisle, Mike Marshall, you and your support staff. I want to thank you, LSB, and our pages. You know, our pages just really every year they're just wonderful, wonderful young people that that you you tend. They almost seem like the same kids every year, so they're so darn good. And you know, you get a lot of every 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 year. You know, about the second day of the session, I I tell them there's going to be a a test on our names and who <laughs> and where we live. But uh, they're just great kids, and uh, I just want to thank them a little bit. When I first started here, I didn't. You know, you're scared to death that first day. And uh, Senator Palmer said, over here where Senator Gronsall sits down, and he was he had been here at least 20, 25 years at that time. And, and I'd known Bill for a long time. I went over, I said, Bill, when can I walk down that center aisle? <laughs> you know, I, I didn't know what the heck. You know, I'm scared to death. I'm I'm a freshman, and you know, like God, I'm, I don't want to do stupid things. He looks at me. He said, "Dearden, you're a state senator. You can walk any damn place you want to." <laughs> and you know, right then, that was a heck of a revelation. That you know, that good God, I am. You know, I never realized it until that moment, and but. <clears throat> I think some of my favorite votes here in the Senate, when I was a freshman, I was able to vote against reinstating the death penalty. And that was huge. Uh, I got to vote against a constitutional amendment banning same-sex marriage. Three times I passed a dumb bill. <laughs> and, you know, I, one of my favorite emails this woman wrote, she says, you're a sick old man. I hope you die of a heart attack hunting morning doves. And we just emailed her back, so do I. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, 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 you know, I mean, if, it, if you're going to die, you know, everybody's going to do it. You might as well do something you enjoy. <laughs> and I guess being the lead sponsor and floor manager of twice of the Constitutional Amendment for I Will is my proudest thing that I've done here. Uh, there's guys, so many of us that worked on that. Uh, so many of us, have, the, the three of them are gone now. Paul Bell in the house, uh, he worked on that. Mary, Senator Mary Lundby, 
used to sit over there where Joe sits now. She's passed. And Barb Pinch was a, uh, a former uh, state representative that uh, from uh, Story County that was the Farm Bureau representative on that group, and I thought, I am never gonna like this woman. She talked funny, she was, she was Farm Bureau, and she was a Republican, and you know, by the time we got through, her and I were lockstep. She fought hard for I will, and she, tra she was killed tragically in a, in a car accident, so we've lost three of them. Four, I just want some, four, four years ago, when I, the first day after I was reelected and we'd come back here, and it was a nasty January morning and there's snow on the ground and just windy and nasty. And my friend, Rich Arnold, a Republican for the House, had retired the year before. And I called Rich up, I said, what are you doing, Rich? And, I, and he said, well, and I, and I hunted with Rich several times, and he said, well, I, I'm sitting on a bucket at 70 degrees, and I'm shooting collared doves. <laughs> and I said, just why in the heck did I run again? <laughs> and so next year, hopefully I'm sitting on a bucket shooting collared doves. But uh, I want to thank Joanne Wingert, who's been my secretary for 22 years. I would assume that's probably a record. Very few of us are around for 22 years. And, uh, you know, normally if somebody's been with them a long time, they've been married to each other. But we go back in the early 70s as friends, her and her husband. And it's every day is a pleasure working with Joanne. And then I want to talk about my life partner here. <laughs> this, this little girl here. She's about the age of you, Paige is probably younger than most of Paige's. She was 16 years old, and I was an old 18-year-old senior. <laughs> and I saw this pretty girl with this long black hair, and clear down to her waist, and had to know who it was. And uh, ended up, two years later, we got married, and and that was 57 years ago this June. And uh, she's been a wonderful partner. She's been everything every, any man could ask in a wife and a mother that's been sharing. So I want to thank everybody for all the kind things you've said today. And uh, hopefully next year I'll be up here to visit the, my state senator and daughter. Thank you. Senator Deard.